Welcome back to Create Craft Costume, where we think crafting or creating is as close to magic as we're going to get. And today, we're going to create these four items from the Fantastic Beasts franchise. In addition, we will be creating a fifth item with our collaborator, Cooking and Craft Chick. She was gracious enough to make the label for an idea that I had in my head, and she is going to be showing us her version of it later in the video. Let's get started. We're going to start today with the craft that I'm surprised we don't have more official options for, and that is the Zawu lore toy from the Crimes of Grindelwald movie. Like, PetSmart just came out with their Harry Potter line of toys, and the fact that this isn't a cat toy is absolutely criminal. However, I feel like this was the most obvious one to start with because it's so easily done with products at home. So to start, I found this faux leather roll in the Dollar Tree Crafter Square section, and I'm just cutting out two circles in order to make a base that we can layer our feathers on. This pack of feathers came from Amazon and I will link them down below, but the editing Ashley wants to say that I would actually recommend getting larger feathers than this if your price point allows for it. But I went and found the largest feathers in the pack and then layered them the way I wanted before gluing them on to the back circle. This is the amount of feathers that remain, so you'll be sure to see these in future crafts. Now, I did notice that the circles that I originally cut out were a bit too large for the front. So I retraced a smaller circle and cut out before I glued all of the feathers together. Editing Ashley also would say that although I was trying to save time and thought that I could just glue them all at once like this, if I had the time, I would have gone back and done them individually because the back did shift on me. So if you're a perfectionist, make sure that you're gluing each feather individually instead of gluing the front and then the back with one big glob of glue. Now we're on to the face in the middle. The most obvious choice to finish this off would be a large brown pom-pom. And trust me, I tried to choose this option. However, there is not a large brown pom-pom within 10 miles of my house at the moment. And when I looked on Amazon, I had a little bit of sticker and quantity shock. I only need one. I have no plans on making 13 other Zawu toys. And so I'm going to show you an alternative based on supplies that I had here in my craft room. I'm going to be using a styrofoam ball, some 3D puffy paint, and a dollar store Easter plushie that I liked the fur of. I would rather cut the fur off of this plushie and discard it instead of having to store supplies that I don't know what to do with and pay more than I was intending. I also found that this puffy paint worked really great as an adhesive and you'll see that the fur stuck really well to it as well as it took away the texture of that styrofoam ball which I really like. I think it gives it a little bit more of an upscale look. And here it is after the paint has dried overnight. Now, since this was a sphere, I had to work on this in sections and I didn't want to wait for the next section to dry overnight again. So instead, I just took off the part that wasn't colored so that it would fit better on the base and save me time. In order to make the handle, we're gonna take a Dollar Tree dowel rod and cover it with antiquing wax. Then to make the noise, we will take some Dollar Tree jingle bells and glue both of these items onto the back of the project. Now, once again, we have an obvious choice of googly eyes to finish off this project. However, unsurprisingly, I do not have any of those in my craft room either. Therefore, in the spirit of unconventionality, I am going to choose these acrylic gems I will paint over them, glue them onto the body, and then I will use this 3D puffy paint in order to make the eyeballs as our finishing touch. Although I would choose to use larger feathers in the future, I think any Zawu or at least a Muggle house cat would be very appreciative of this toy, but you let me know what you think in the comments below.
While the first craft was the most obvious, this next one is probably the most obscure, and it comes because of a lack of merchandise and a love of ocean creatures. I wish there was more Kelpie merchandise on the market. So I was desperate to see if I could pull this craft off. This craft started with two Dollar Tree items, both of which can be found in their toy section. One is their mermaid and one is their plastic toy horse, which you are going to start by cutting in half and then you're going to take the tail off the mermaid. I'm sure you can see where this is going, but we are going to glue these two parts together. I hope you're already saying, oh, this looks pretty good, but we're going to see if we can improve it even more. For the next step, we're going to take some Model Magic Air Dry Clay to try and smooth out that seam section. That way there's not such a hard line between the horse body and the tail. As you will also see in this shot, I was doing two of them. And that is because I was the most unsure about being able to pull off this craft. And I thought giving myself twice the options would help me increase my chances. You can tell me whether you think I pulled it off in the comments down below or not. But the very next step is to paint it. And you will see here that I am actually using a small tub of Dollar Tree acrylic paint. Guys, this was not by choice. Don't do this. I realized I had ran out of green and I thought that putting any type of paint on it would be a benefit. I was actually planning on using the containers for a separate project, not the actual paint. You will see later I did go and get some apple barrel paint from Walmart and that was the only thing that actually covered it. Don't use Dollar Tree paint. There's your unexpected product review of the day. Definitely use something else. Now it's time to build out the body of our Kelpie. And the key to doing this is going to be getting a variety of aquatic plants. If you look at any photo, it has straight, it has wide, and it has some narrow plants attached to it. So I found these options on Amazon and I'm going to cut them and strategically glue them onto the body of our Kelpie. Now, when I say glue, before I do that, I decided as a dry run that I was going to melt holes into the side to give it something to hold on to. Historically speaking, glue and plastic don't necessarily get along and I thought it would give the Kelpie more body if I stuck the plant into a hole to have it come out. So I strategically melted holes into the side of this Kelpie before gluing the leaves on. Because I did this as a dry run first, I have a couple tips. First of all, when you are melting the hole in the side, make sure that you are paying attention to where your glued on leaves are. I did accidentally melt some, and so I had to re-glue new leaves on. My next tip is to make sure you're using some type of silicone tool. That will save your fingers from a lot of burns. Also, make sure that you are using your variety of leaves and that you are laying them out before you glue. On my dry run, I feel like I got way too many leaves up front and I didn't spread them out enough without making the Kelpie look too full. So make sure that you are checking where your leaves will fall and that you're mixing in those longs with those flats. It also helps if you work from back to front using the largest to smallest leaves. As I moved up the head of the Kelpie, I used smaller leaves to make it proportional. That also means that you want to make sure you're using a variety of leaves in your Kelpie. Like I said, the bigger ones should be towards the back and the middle and the smaller ones up towards the front because that will give it that proportion and the dimension that you're really looking for. And here we've hit the self-doubt part of the crafting process and wonder whether we can actually pull this off. It is a little more rough than I would like, but we're going to see what we can do with some paint. So to take that plastic edge off, I'm going to take more of that apple barrel paint and start leaving streaks of it on the kelp. Now, my husband did ask, why didn't I paint these ahead of time? I'll be honest, you could have, but I think you would have had to do touch-ups with the hot glue anyway. And I thought I would get a more natural look doing it this way, 
Plus, I didn't want it to necessarily be completely opaque. I still like how the leaves are a little bit transparent, but you can do this either way. Let me know if you have a different technique. After a few light coats of paint, it did look markedly better, but I decided to do something a little non-movie authentic anyway, and I added some Dollar Tree moss to the blemishes that I just wasn't liking, and I really enjoy how this turned out. I think it gave it a really more upscale and natural feel, which is what you would hope from an ocean creature. You let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, the problem was getting it to stand. The foliage would kind of support it, but not entirely, so I took these two Dollar Tree ovals and I coated them with some antiquing wax and simply glued our Kelpie to the bottom. Now, while this is a craft that may look a little bit better from farther away, it's the closest that I'm going to get and I'm really proud of how it turned out. So this will definitely be going on my shelves. I love the color scheme of this next animal so much that I used them in my branding and we are going to be making an Akami inspired candle. I found this feather candle base in the Dollar Tree candle section but I forgot to take a picture of it before I gave it its first coat. And guys, the paint is everything on this one. So make sure you start with a good base layer. And I started with this Rust-Oleum Satin Lagoon. And then we're going to switch to using Color Shift paint. And this paint is so much fun. And here is your next unintended product review. If you see bottles of this paint by one in every color, it leaves the most beautiful finish and it's so fun to play with. I was lucky to find mine on clearance at Walmart and I will definitely be using everything that I buy. Just like with the Kelpie, I did some dry runs to see which color combination I preferred. And the four that I used the most were the Aqua Flash, the Purple Flash, a little bit of the pink, and a little bit of the blue. And as you can see from my palette, you will use these in various quantities. And the one that you are definitely going to use the most is that aqua flash, not blue, but aqua because it gives it that signature bright color shifting quality that we really want to see. So in order to achieve that, the very first step is layering the entire candle in that color. Just build it up to give it that iridescence. Now it's time to add the dimension, and to do this I'm going to combine two of our color shifting paints. Most of it is going to be aqua, but then I'm going to combine it with a little bit of this blue flash, and I'm going to start at the base of the feathers and bring it up the body. So now I'm going to be working with the layers that are naturally built into the candle holder. Something that I found about this paint is that it combines really, really well, and it may look subtle when you're actually using it, but it dries beautifully, as you can see on this second step. This paint also layers really well, and that last shot was actually two coats of me layering those colors together, so you can do it to your liking. But the finishing touch is we're going to take this purple flash and we're going to lightly dust the edges of the feathers. And I do mean lightly. A little of this tends to go a long way. You can also make it lighter on the edges and darker on the tip for more of that shift. But part of the fun of this project is making the paint and styling it the way you want to. And here's just one styling alternative. In lieu of a candle, why not try cooking in Craft Chicks Alchemy eggshells? While being perfect for this craft, Cooking and Craft Chick has also graciously agreed to collaborate with me again on this next project. This project serves an important purpose because it will keep our favorite pilfering pest in place. The purpose of this item is to help you manage your magical creatures, so the only goal is to make an object so irresistible that your wayward Niffler will come home, whether that's through leaving metaphorical shiny breadcrumbs or shaking it. The object is to make it shiny. The good news is, is since shiny is the only requirement, there's a lot of variety and options when it comes to this craft, both in containers 
and the things that you can place inside of it. All of these items were picked up from the Dollar Tree, which was a lot more reliable than leaning on leprechaun gold. Yes, these coins were from the St. Patrick's Day section, but I have had them more than 24 hours. If you can't find them, they are also located in the party section. They just have a different emblem on them. After this, it is layering to your liking. You can see here that I used a lot of the clear and neutral colors while throwing in a splash of the red, gold, and blue. But you can choose based on your Niffler's preference, of course. If you find the same supplies, here's what you'll have left over. So you can definitely make more Niffler bottles, particularly if you pick up more pearls. Now it's time for the finishing touch, which I could not do without our collaborator. She was gracious enough to make a Niffler treat label. And we are going to print this out on sticker paper, go around the edge with a permanent marker, as she has always recommended in her videos, and then we are going to stick this on the front of our bottle. Of course, you can still print this on regular paper and use Mod Podge, but sticker paper was actually a tip that I picked up from her channel, so of course I'm going to use it. Now, I showed you what it looked like with all Dollar Tree and St. Patrick's Day supplies, but here is what the party supply section looks like, and these come in both gold and silver. But another alternative is you could add not only different size pearls, but these fake Gringotts coins, and you can strategically place them on the outside of the bottle to give it a really more authentic Harry Potter look. And hey, maybe your Niffler just found some extra change to add to his pile. And speaking of authentic, the cooking and craft chick not only made the label for this, but she also made her own take on the project. And guys, look at these supplies. This is just such an upscale version. And I really hope she talks about where she got these because now I certainly want to make another version for myself. If you are interested in seeing how she made this version as well as getting the label, you are going to click through the link in the description box down below so that you can add this to your own collection. No, 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 no. Just wait one more minute before you go. I have a bonus project that will help Harry Potter collectors. If you're interested in Fantastic Beasts, you may have this Grindelwald pendant in your collection. And something that was unique about this is it didn't come with a display box like the Golden Egg did or Hermione's Time Turner. So our only option was to either keep it in the box or let your Niffler steal it. So now I'm going to show you how you can create a display out of a Dollar Tree triangular shadow box that you can pick up in their home decor section. You're going to take one of these boxes and some antique crafting wax and you're going to paint the sides of it. Then you're going to add a paper of your choosing to the back. And here is a faux velvet piece that I got from Michaels. And you're just going to simply combine them like this. Next, it's time to break out the power tools, but first I'm going to measure both length and width to make sure that I get the dots in the same spot because then the necklace won't hang crooked. My next tip is make sure that you choose a drill bit that is wide enough for the lobster claw clasp to get through the hole. This necklace does not have a detachable chain, so you have to take the chain through each hole separately. So make sure that you don't damage the item by making sure there's a hole big enough for it. Once your holes are made, it's time for the back. And I'm actually going to use the exact same plastic bag that held the chains in the packaging. So I'm gonna put the chains in that plastic bag. I'm going to measure how I want the necklace to hang exactly. And then I'm just gonna use shipping tape to cover the plastic bag and tighten the seal on the chains so that it won't move as long as I don't play with it. You can see in the corner that I actually tried a couple different methods and the shipping tape and bag was the best one for least potentially damaging the item. And now you have one fabulous display minus any commercial packaging. These were my five Fantastic Beast DIY crafts that I had for you today, but I do have plenty more where that came from. So please don't forget to subscribe and share with anyone who is a Harry Potter fan. 
especially because these are items that you can make yourself if you don't want to buy any official merchandise. Now, if you've made it this far, please leave a kitty cat emoji in your comment telling me which craft was your favorite. And are you as excited for The Secrets of Dumbledore as I am? Because I have really been looking forward to this and I just hope it doesn't disappoint. And one last request before we officially sign off. If you actually make one of these items, because I'm sure they can be improved on, please don't forget to tag Create Craft Costume over on Instagram or even send us an email picture. I would love to see if any of these inspired you. And until then, keep crafting and creating magic of your own. See you next time. Bye.